maybe just maybe the reason we haven't come out of our circumstances is because we're trying to figure them out ourselves. We're trying to hold on to them and, and make a way out of no way, making a mess even bigger. Maybe, just maybe, it is our own fault that we are trying, we cannot come out of the season that we're in. And lo and behold, we serve a God that's waiting for us to put our problems in his hands. Think things we ought to put in our hands uh, our, our heart, our, our, our hurt, our finances. We, we got to put our children in their hands. I'm a product of a praying mother. My mother put me in God's hands because if I told you my story, it is a good thing that I'm still here. But I'm saying that we have to put all of our things, our health, our marriage, our, our addictions, our job. We even have to put our church in God's hand. We live in the day and age that our children are killing each other. We have to put everything in God's hands. And I'm saying that maybe if God has not answered your prayers or worked out your circumstances, he's waiting for you to put the problem in his hands. This Psalms, brothers and sisters, was wisely Placed. Whoever edited it, uh, it was arranged that the sacred poems, he had an eye of opposition and contrast for this psalms. If you notice, if we look back in Psalms 137, 1 through 9, we see the need of silence before revealers. But now we find uh, this Davidic psalm where he's telling them to don't worry about what it is that when you cry out and put your circumstances in God's hands, he will save you. Uh, the psalmist, of course, has critics and have tried the authorship of David to account the mention of the temple, uh, though it happens that in one of the psalms which he's allowed to be David, the same word occurs many modern critics are to the word of God, to blow flies are, to put food in men. Uh, they cannot do us any good, but it does not appear no material to this occasion. David penned this psalm, but he says... In a few in this in this chapter, David's thankfulness upon his experiences, he had given God his hand. He looks forward to the comfort and hopes uh, in verses four through five, and the others would go into praise like God. But here we find verses six through eight that God will go on into good because they gave them his his problems. Brothers and sisters, in singing this psalms, and the singing this psalm. We must devote ourselves to the praise and glory of God and the power that he had. I'm Baptist. Uh, I'm Baptist, so there's always three. The first thing the text is telling to show us is that God will comfort you. Put it in his hands. You ought to realize that God will comfort you. The first part of verse number seven says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou will revive me. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters, there really is no greater comfort to one soul than to know that God himself is with you. Notice that Paul says, God comforts us all in our troubles. It does not matter, brothers and sisters, what it is that we're going through. We serve a God that comforts us. The Greek word for comfort is par paraclete. That literally means that God is beside us. Now, putting, God is waiting for us to put things in our hands. It's good to know that he comforts us because he is there. One thing I do realize is that he will not lead you wrong. He will not bully you to make you do things that he's waiting for you to do himself. But it's good to know that when I'm trying to turn over my circumstances, I serve a God that will comfort me in the middle of my situation. Whatever your circumstances is, if you're dealing with death, if you're dealing with grief, if you're dealing with financial hardship, if you're dealing with a divorce, whatever your sickness is, God will comfort you when you give it to him. But you have to be able to realize and say that, God, I need you. God, I'm standing in my own way. God, I can't do this without you. And I need you to come pick this burden up off of, off, off my back. We, we serve a God that comforts us in our, in our troubles. Many times we don't want to give God our problems because we can't dictate and be able to tell what the end result of that is. But if we serve a God that, 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 that comforts us, that ought to let us know that no matter what he has in store for us, it's always going to work out for our favor. If, if he comforts us, he's never going to let it get too bad. Uh, 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 uh. Kirk Franklin wrote a song that says he'll never put more on you than, than you can bear. So when you're trying to give God your problems, when, you, when you're trying to come, I know sometimes giving God things and asking for help is uncomfortable. 
But we serve a God that is comfort. He gives us comfort in the middle of trying to do these things. Uh, notice, it says, Paul says that, for I have come in much joy and comfort in you. Watch this. God gives us peace when we're trying to give him him, when he gives us comfort. He says, God's peace won't make sense, but it always covers us. Uh, 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 there's comfort in the peaceful safety of God's love. So, so my question is, why not give it to him if you know that he will protect you for it? If he comforts you in the middle of it, there's no need to hold on to it. There, there are reasons we put our circumstances in his hands because he comforts us. But not only that, when we're in troubles, he gives us peace. When the storms of life are raging, God has the ability to calm the waves, but he's waiting for us to turn it over to him to give us the peace that surpasses all, all understanding. Uh, 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 how many times has Jesus had to, has God had to rock you to sleep at night? How, how many times has he calmed your nerves in, in bad situations? How, how many times have you realized that he has walked with you and talked with you and he keeps telling you that you are my own? And I'm, I'm saying that when you give it to him, he will take care of whatever it is that, you, that you're standing in need of. He, he loves us when no one else does. He has the ability to open doors where there's a wall. I'm saying that he comforts us when he gives when we give us his problems. Thanks to God because I'm grateful that when we need him, he, he gives us comfort. First thing the text will tell us to show us, I told you I was going to get out your hair. First thing the text will tell us to show us that, that he comforts us. Second thing the text will tell us that God will protect us. Second part of verse number seven says, Thou will stretch forth thy hand though not against my enemies, to destroy them, yet against the wrath of my enemies. This, this, in fact, brothers and sisters, which will revive a fainting David, our foes fall when the Lord comes to deal with them. Uh, uh, when you're dealing with circumstances, uh, the devil, uh, that's where he tries to kick you while you're down. You, you, you're battling with giving it to God. You've given it to God. You're waiting for him to over. He comforts you, but he also protects you. Uh, the devil is when, that's when the devil, when you're dealing with the circumstances, that's when he wants to get you the best. That's when he tells you, look, you've been serving that God all this time. You've been doing this. You've been serving as a deacon. You've been ushering all your life. And look at you now, you're going through this. That's, that's where he comes. But because we serve a God that comforts us and not only protects us, that's where he blocks everything that the devil is trying to do. That's when he builds a hedge of a protection around us in those moments that when you give it to him, he's saying, I got you all the way around. I'll comfort you and I'll protect you. Isn't it good that we serve a God that protects us from all sorts of things? Isn't it good that when our heart is broken, God protects us? Even isn't it good that we serve a God that when our mind is going crazy, he protects us, our mind. Isn't it good that we serve a God that no matter what the circumstances, he protects us because we've given all of our problems and all of our circumstances to him. We serve a God that, that, that protects us. A few scriptures reminds us, and there's a laundry list of God's uh, uh, amazing power. That, that There's a, a laundry list of scriptures that shows what he does. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Uh, Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not. Be not afraid for the Lord thy God. He is with you. 2 Timothy 4, 18 says, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto the heavenly kingdom. My favorite is Psalms 121, And the Lord shall preserve me from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. I'm saying that when you're trying to give God, don't worry about what it looks like because he not only covers you and comforts you, but he protects you in the middle of whatever it is that you're waiting for him to do. But you have to be strong enough to put it in his hands. It's, it's okay to put it in his hands because he protects us. When God, with our life and our circumstances are in God's hands, they're in the best hands that they could ever be in. I'm old enough to remember uh, the old Allstate commercial. You're in good hands with Allstate. I I'm going to take that same concept and say you're in good hands with God. But you have to be strong enough to say, God, here it is. Here is my problem. Here, here is my circumstances. And give it to him because he'll comfort you and protect you from everything. 
First thing the text will tell us to show you, and I'm told you I'm going to be done early today. Uh, first thing the text will tell us to show is that he comforts us. Second thing the text will tell us to show us is that he, he protects us. Last thing the text will tell us to show us is that in due time, God will deliver you. Last part of verse number seven says, thy right hand shall save you. As he has one hand to stretch out against the enemies to protect you, God has the other hand pulling you out of your circumstance. He's saving you from whatever it is that you're dealing with. Uh, uh, the catch to it is, you have to give it to him. That's literally the whole point. You have to give it to him. Uh, as we experience his deliverance daily, it ought to increase our faith. Grandma said it this way. She said, ain't no secret what God can do because what he's done for others, he'll, he'll surely do for you. He, if he did it before, he can surely do it again. And I'm sure that you are not the only person that has dealt with whatever it is you're dealing with. I'm sure you're the only person, not the only person who has dealt with death. I'm sure you're not the only person who's had to go through financial hardship. I'm sure you're not the only person that's gone through a particular situation. But I'm saying that if he did it to them, for them and they gave it to him, I'm just encouraging you to give your same circumstances and your same problems to God because he can do it for you as well. Watch this. God offers us his covenant that binds us to him. Uh, not only that, but and he blesses us with even greater help and strength. I'm saying when he blesses us, he not only protects us and comforts us, but he gives us strength to keep going. Isn't it good that we can get strength from on high? The joy of the Lord is my strength, but when he saves me, I feel like I can run on. When he, when he opens doors, I feel like I can run on. When he, when he makes ways out of no way, it makes me feel like that I can still keep running and still keep fighting day in and day out. There is only one who can help. Uh, and that one person literally is the Lord himself. Uh, he has all authority and all power in heaven and earth. He, he is mighty to save us. He's, he's, the real, he's the true God. Watch this. The reality is, uh, reality gives light to darkness. So when he saves you, pulls you out of your dark circumstances when you've given him your, your circumstances, uh, it feels like the weight is lifted off you, the lights are shining bright, everything looks good. Uh, but but the, the, the thing is that you have to remember that when you give it to him, he will do it. And if by chance, let me, let me just say this, Dr. Smith, uh, if it feels like he hasn't answered your prayers, you, you say, God, uh, I, I've given you my circumstance, God, I've walked away from it, I'm letting you have it, I'm not going to try to fight no more, I'm not going to try to figure it out my, no more. Uh, uh, God's timing is perfect. So while you're waiting on him to save you, uh, that's where you uh, spend time with him. That's where you, where you read your word. That's where you, where you study. Uh, uh, that's where you worship God. That's where you thank God for what it is he's about to do. Three, three things that happens when God delivers you. He gives you strength. Not only does he give you strength, but he gives you a way of escape. I'm glad that we serve a God that gives us a way of escape because when I was in trouble, he makes ways out of no way. When I thought I was going to lose my mind, he gave my mind strength and power to keep on running. But not only that, but he meets all of our needs. I'm grateful that we serve a God that when we give our needs to him, he can meet them. I'm reminded of a song, Florida Mass Choir saying, and it's really easy, really simple. It says, I put it all in his hands. I, I, I put it all in his hands. He said, all of my problems, all of my burdens. If I have a question, I put it all in his hands. And Mount Carmel, that's all I came to tell you this morning, that whatever you're dealing with, whatever it is that you, that's on your back, whatever's weighing you down, I'm saying that do not take those problems that you've been fighting with since January into 2023. I'm saying today is a good day to give your problems to God. Today is a good day to turn over whatever it is you've been struggling with. Today is a good day not to walk away with it. I'm saying that when you give it to him, he'll make ways. When you give it to him, he'll work it out for you. When you give it to him, it will make you feel better. There's no need in you trying to take it with you anymore because it's killing you. It's destroying. It's stressing you out. Your hair is turning gray. But when you give it to God, the joy that you'll get from coming from that, the joy you'll get from him saving you, he'll make ways out 
out of no ways, but you have to give all your problems to him. You have to give your circumstances to him. I'm saying that don't take those problems, put them in God's hand, and let God deal with them.